Well, good morning, YouTube. This is Cruise Man from McDonald's at Willow Park, Texas. Look it up on a map and you'll probably figure out what's going on. First thing I need to do is get my phone hooked up for CarPlay. I am actually, finally, on my road trip to Midland, to West Texas, to see my brother. And, uh, it, you know, that trip got delayed. I'm going to see if I can get CarPlay to work. I don't see it. Not a good sign. Let me try it again. I haven't used CarPlay in quite a while, so maybe I'm forgetting something. I don't think so. You're just supposed to plug it in, right? That's what I did. And, uh,. I guess I have to go into CarPlay here and see what's going on. Sorry to make you uh, suffer through this. Uh, it says, says it's in there. It recognizes it. I'm unplugging it. Oh, I know what it is. I don't have my headset turned on. So you got to remember this, all the steps. I didn't have my headset turned on, so CarPlay won't work until the headset's on. So let's see if that, okay. Now let's see if it comes up. Come on, baby. Well, it's still not coming up. Come on. I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in one more time. And if it doesn't work, then I guess I just have to live without CarPlay today. Yeah, that's pretty typical. So, CarPlay is set up on this with the Goldwing. Bikes on, audio systems on, headsets on, connected, getting sound, and no CarPlay. So, um, you know, the bottom line is it's just not reliable. And I feel the little buzz on the phone when I plug it in, so that kind of indicates that there is a connection, plus I do see a Bluetooth connection on the screen, but there's no, uh, no CarPlay icon showing up here. Okay, so we'll just not mess with that. I can't spend all day on it. I've got uh, places to be and things to do. You may notice uh, this is the first road trip I've taken with this Kimimoto motorcycle bag on the back seat. And it I will say it does hold a lot of stuff. Much more than I need for this uh, five day trip. I could probably easily put seven or eight days worth of stuff. In fact, if you saw my packing video, you should have seen how I packed up this Kimimoto bag. See if I can figure out how to get out of here. But it does hold a lot of stuff, and I've got a lot of stuff in there right now. And what I'm kind of surprised, once I got it strapped down to the seat, is that I'm actually able to open the trunk with the bag on the seat. I was afraid that I was going to have to either live with a trunk that would just barely open, or that I would have to take the bag off the seat every time I wanted to get in the trunk. But it actually opens fully with the bag on the seat, which is kind of nice. Now, honestly, this Kimimoto bag is probably a little too big for this bike. If it were just about six inches and more narrow, I think it'd probably be perfect. But perfect doesn't really exist, so it's... Uh, it does work, and I have it tied down with the rock straps, 
and it's got all my stuff in it so it freed up all my literally all my space my saddlebags I've got a ton of room so anyway for those of you who are not familiar welcome to cruise man's garage YouTube channel we talk about a lot of stuff here regarding motorcycles how-to videos tips and tricks motor vlogs like this one and I would just appreciate it not only would I appreciate it but I would also tell you that if you believe in following the science then you need to subscribe to this channel the debate is over you get much more enjoyment out of riding your motorcycle if you subscribe to Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel so I'm going to ask you to follow the science, click that little subscribe button down below and don't forget to click the bell icon so that you can let YouTube know when you want to uh, get more of these videos, get notified of my videos. Now if you're new to the channel you may not know but I am actually doing a road trip today. I'm on my way to West Texas to visit my brother. I do this trip about twice a year. Uh, sometimes I go three times a year, but if I do go three times a year, I usually fly one time. I'll maybe go out at Christmas, and generally I'll fly out because you never know what the weather's going to be like in December. So I don't. I don't usually take. I don't take the bike in December. I'll usually go out in May, early June, like now, and then maybe again in September, October, something like that. Uh, my brother lives out here in West Texas and it's about a 350 mile ride each way so it gives me a chance to get out on the bike and do a little road trip and do a little motor vlogging too it's not a pretty ride it's pretty much flat it's uh, I take the interstate just because it's easier there is a way to go using back highways uh, but it adds maybe an hour and a half to the trip because not only do you have to go farther north But you're going through a lot of little towns, and it's really not a prettier ride anyway. It's just different It just breaks it up a little I'm not typically an interstate rider. I don't like riding on the interstate because I don't like sharing the highway with all the big uh, semi tractor trailers but on this trip I'm leaving I'm actually on a Sunday I'm riding so there's not much traffic it usually does start picking up when I get to Abilene Texas usually the traffic starts picking up and usually that's about the time the wind starts shifting and picking up too uh, right now I have very little wind and if there is any wind it's kind of at my back but usually when I get to Abilene, the wind either starts hitting me head on or it start, I get a heavy crosswind. And any of, you, any of those of you who've lived in West Texas, you know about the wind. It can be a very windy place. I'm also today taking my first road trip using the 20 inch F4 Customs windshield with the recurve at the top. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I usually have on the tall uh, plus four. It's like a 24 inch F4 Customs windshield. I love F4 Customs windshields. They're super durable. They're super easy to clean. And they shed water like, like nobody's business. But they, I tested out this 20 inch model, oh, I don't know, a couple of years ago. But I didn't ride with it for very long because I needed to also test out the taller model and I ended up keeping the tall windshield because I think it's four inches taller than stock and maybe a couple inches wider. But then uh, my friend Don Smith ended up buying the 20 inch, the one that I was testing, he ended up buying it from F4 Customs and he loves it. And I have to admit, it does fit the look of the bike better. The, the Plus 4 model is a little bit large for this bike. I mean, as far as the looks. 
it works great and since I'm about six foot two uh, I figured I would keep the taller model right now I'm testing out the 20 inch on this road trip and it granted I don't have a ton of wind hitting me let me see how high I've got it yeah I've pretty much got it all the way up and I'm getting literally no buffeting on my helmet and it's very comfortable now I am getting a little more wind on my shoulders than I would with that larger windshield but it's not bad so I'm gonna be riding with this recurve on this trip and then I'm going to be giving you a little more I wouldn't say more fair I guess it would be more fair because I will have had a chance to use it for a longer period of time but it will be a fair chance to compare this to the larger windshield. I would say, however, if you're 6'2 or taller, uh, you're probably going to be more comfortable with that, that plus 4 windshield. Now, this windshield, when it's fully up, it's just like the stock windshield. It's actually the same height as the stock windshield. I can still see over the windshield. Now, it looks like I'm looking through the windshield because the GoPro camera sits lower. It's down by my chin. But my eyes are actually up above the windshield. So I can see over it just fine. And I'm not getting any buffeting. It's very comfortable ride right now. So I'm testing out three things on this ride. I've got the F4 Customs 20-inch recurve windshield. I've got the Kimimoto bag. And I also have a new GPS tracker, which I will be doing a full review of as soon as I get back. I might even do it at my brother's house. We'll just have to see how that works. But I'm testing out another GPS tracker. Some of you saw my review of the Monimoto, which I also have on the bike. I have both of the trackers on the bike right now. And I'm comparing the two. So watch for that review coming up soon and I will be doing more of these moto vlogs on this road trip like I say this is a kind of a boring trip so there's not a lot to see not a lot to talk about scenery wise it's just a long haul to West Texas so I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Don't forget to click the thumbs up if you liked the video. And also, thank you for watching the 20 essential things that every Honda Goldwing owner needs to know. You guys came in and watched that video, made it a huge success. Thank you. I'm hoping that video will be recommended by Honda dealers when people buy new Goldwings. So, thanks for making that video a success. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow the science and click the subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Motor Blog.